This week, I am announcing, still with empty paper in hand, the podcast 3.0. Now, I I I I know that that uh, well, it's not very often that you announce a podcast point O in the single digits. In fact, technically, you only get to do it ten times, and not. What do you mean only numbers one through nine, George? What about podcast 0.0? See? Okay. All right. Thank you. So once again, I was right, which isn't newsworthy. So the reason that I'm moving to podcast 3.0 and I'm annexing last week's podcast, I was debating it last week. I said, you know, this is, this is 2017 and I, you know, I, the, the podcast began Oh boy, it must have been 2009. I had this cheap little microphone, which I still am looking at. It wasn't a condenser. It was it was okay, but yeah. So I started with that little microphone back in 2009, and the podcast ran for about a year. I I edited my own XML feed, which was in the iTunes. You could search. I mean, I, I I I manually edited the feed every single episode, which was about 45 minutes twice a week. I think it was a Tuesday, Thursday deal. And my friends who don't know how to work and listen to audio at the same time kept telling me that it was so long. It's so long. It's so long. I'm like, well, then if, if, if audio can't be longer than 10 minutes, then how in the world does any talk radio stay financially sustainable? And I don't just mean left wing talk radio, which doesn't work. You know, left wing news only works on TV where it's less unsustainable, but anyhow, but you know, most, I mean, anyhow, no, it's an interesting phenomenon. Air America tried to do liberal talk radio, and a lot of people interpreted that as a failure of liberalism since it, it flopped. Actually, conservative, right-wing-minded, not necessarily Republican, but, but constitutionally conservative-minded people tend to be the type of people who want to listen to ideas while they're doing their work, and that's talk radio. Other people who don't have those types of ideas, they want to sit down and watch and listen. But but if they're working, they want to hear music. So they, I mean, if if they get ideas, they want to look at it. If if they're working, they want to listen to entertainment. And so it's kind of an ideological makeup difference. But anyhow, I had friends, they tell me, Jesse, I just can't listen to this. So I'm like, why not? Well, it takes so much time. Well, what do you do when you listen? Well, I sit down and listen. Don't sit down and listen to a podcast. You're supposed to put the podcast on and then go do something. Play the podcast again and again and again and again and again. Everybody loves me to repeat myself. I have no idea how many times I'd say the same thing before people get it. But anyhow, rather than venting all over my audience, in the early, early, this this is a recap, by the way, if you haven't figured that out. The podcast began 2009. It was twice a week, 45 minutes each. I edited my own XML feed. I was in iTunes. I figured out how everything worked. I started without without 100, 100 listeners. And it was fun. It was going. And then it got exhausting for me. And then a few years ago, I picked it back up. And that lasted 195 episodes in a row, except for the fact that the first year, I just started towards the end of the year and I skipped Christmas. The first year. But I went traveling and continued to keep the podcast going while I was traveling. So... I figured, let's see, what's 195? I mean, that's just, that's almost four years of podcasts. And so last year, 2016, I made a New Year's resolution of 10 minutes and I kept it. Now you're wondering, what's this year's New Year's resolution, Jesse? Well, I think it's going to be 1920 by 1080 because I don't like to change much. But my 2016 resolution was 10 minutes and I kept it all year long. I I kept it at 10 minutes. And so now I've figured out how I do things and I no longer talk about random things. I either talk about the podcast and what I'm doing in my work or uh, I, well, and, or I discuss some other beneficial idea. I've gotten into a theme, into a gig. The way to do anything well is to do it. And I've done it. So we're looking at close to five years of contiguous podcasting. The first one, 1.0. And then 
the last one, whatever you want to, however, whatever, this is podcast 3.0 and I'm starting the episodes over at one and I'm thrilled. We're going to stay at 10 minutes. We're starting afresh. I'm in Stitcher. I'm in iTunes. Um, and to avoid getting political, I read the political blogs over the Pacific Daily Times, which is in the Symphony Editorial Podcast, which is totally separate. So that's how I keep everything organized. Having kept that format, I think it's time to, I mean, it's time to go. It's time to call this thing real and to push it. I'm ready. I didn't want to really push and market my podcast before. I I wasn't ready. You got to get good at something. So so many people market too early. You know what I mean? You know, and you're right. Yeah. I know exactly. You know what I'm talking. They, They get in, it's all marketing. And they don't know what they're... And yeah, exactly. So, having announced... Well, you know, no. The other thing was this. A year ago, I got my Yeti. It's, a, it's this quality mic I'm using. I've only been using it for a year. I needed to figure out how the thing worked, how to, how to modulate things correctly and, and, and mess with the noise. So, here we go. Podcast 3.0. Let's not get go, like, waste too much time. And I don't like that without further ado. My, my high school public speaking teacher hated it, and I don't like to say without further ado. We're just going to get going. Now, I, I want to say something here. Um, I've, I've run into this this week. and delete that from the pile. Or for, yeah, the pod pile. The, the pod pile was a list of things I had to talk about back in the day in the original podcast. Um... Which Brenton and Kurt and Jonathan were and Nate were all privy to. So I, I run into this this week. People, people who are unfamiliar with something. Um, you, you try to do something and other people don't immediately recognize it. What we what we do is we we get creative. People get creative and then they they add words to your meaning. And you do it to other people. I I do it to other people. Try to minimize it when you do it, but they do it to you and we do it. Well, the thing is, when, when you're mislabeling someone else, you kind of don't know it and you justify it. When someone else mislabels and misunderstands you, you see it, but you don't see it when you're the one doing it. And that's the problem. If everyone would see it when they're doing it, then, you know, so I try to not preach to others. I try to preach to myself. Usually things that irritate you about others are true of yourself. <clears throat> That's why they're so irritating. How dare you point out what's wrong with me, you person who doesn't know that it's wrong with me, just by living what I live. Uh, So, the sad part is this. When we misunderstand what other people do, someone does something and we don't have a pre-existing category for it. We don't recognize it. So, we try to cram it into something we recognize so that we can move on with our lives and don't have to install a new file cabinet to understand that person. When we do that... We miss out on so much. We, we marginalize people. Oh, you're just trying to sell me snake oil or Ramway or whatever, you know, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. It's like, no, actually, that wasn't what I was trying to do or, you know, and then we misunderstand each other for years and years and years and we miss out on so much. Don't do it. Don't do, know when you're doing it. Don't do it. We just miss out on so much. It's made me really sad. Well, before I get to the point, I want to say this. I ran up a little theological, it's in the faith articles this week. I I haven't written a faith piece in a while. And of course, I couldn't write it without rambling on about the Constantinian Sunday morning system. But check it out about Lordship v. Grace and how to solve the debate. I thought that was interesting. Go check it out. So that said, I am going to, in Podcast 3.0, Episode 2, get to the point. When we offend others, it is very easy to sit on our little power nests we have so carefully crafted through the years and lecture others on their need to forgive us in response to our misinterpretation of their request that we make a better life. Whether someone forgives me for whatever I may do to offend him is not my business. It is between him, God, and his relationships that his offendedness may poison. The only role I have with someone I have offended is to listen, interpret, and rectify, no matter how youthful and not my style his words are. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.